This is Jeff Mucci with RCR Wireless News. We're in Palo Alto meeting with Marcelo Typrin, who is VP of Marketing and Product Development for YAP. Marcelo, thank you for joining us today. What do you do, what does YAP do, and who do you do it for? We are a uh, we're a voice transcription service, fully hosted in the cloud, mm -hmm. and we provide our partners with the ability to take spoken input and convert it into text. Mm -hmm. And there are a number of different applications that our platform supports. Uh, the application that I would say is really the killer app right now that's really taking off is voicemail to text conversion. So you may have used that in the past. Um, basically, when you get a voicemail, uh, instead of having to bring the phone up to your ear to listen to the message, you can now get it as an email or as a text message, which is really convenient, particularly in situations when you're in a meeting or in mm -hmm. a loud situation. It's just a lot easier in many cases to read your voicemail instead of having to listen to it. Right. When was the company founded? 2006. Tell me a little bit about the management team and your financial partners. Sure. So, uh, the, founded by Igor Yablokov, who mm -hmm. ran uh, speech R&D at IBM. Um, we brought in uh, some additional R&D folks, Jeff Adams, who was previously at Nuance Dragon, where he ran the R&D effort there. Mm -hmm. uh, Felix Goffman, who uh, had uh, ran uh, sales at Nuance. Mm -hmm. And then myself, I ran products and marketing uh, for the speech efforts at, uh, at Microsoft as well as um, at, at Tell Me. Right. And then previous to that at Nuance. Mm -hmm. And who are your financial backers? We are backed by Sunbridge Partners and Harbert Partners, mm -hmm. uh, a Series A round from them, a total of about $8 million in funding. That's great. Um, so who's your customer? Our customers are, um, are, are players in the telecom space, uh, landline service providers, wireless operators, uh, messaging infrastructure providers, device OEMs, anyone who needs a user experience that converts speech into text is a partner of ours in the space. Mm -hmm. Which customers can you talk about today? I can talk about Cincinnati Bell, our most recent uh, operator deployment. Mm -hmm. um, they're using Yap to uh, offer voicemail to text uh, services to their customer base. Mm -hmm. uh, we're, we're also partnering with uh, messaging infrastructure providers. Right. UReach is an example. They work closely with Verizon and, and other, other mm -hmm. carriers in North America. Uh, we're certified um, on Alcatel Lucent, and we work with them and their partners and their customers to deliver uh, voice transcription services as well. Mm -hmm. What do you think the risk of an operator not adopting um, transcription services? What if they don't? Who, who's going to fill that void? Well, what's, what we're seeing right now is that um, Google is really driving a lot of the market right now through mm -hmm. their Google Voice uh, rollout last summer. Um, and what they've demonstrated is that there's really a lot of user subscriber demand for this. Now, what we're seeing is um, operators and the and the and the and the industry that supports the operator is really moving to react to that. Mm -hmm. And the issue is that you know whereas Google has their own significant speech R and D work going on, uh, a lot of the partners who need to respond to that don't, and mm -hmm. they need to turn to Yap for that capability, and obviously we're happy to work with them and give them an alternative in the marketplace. Mm -hmm. Where do Microsoft and Apple fit in the equation? Well, Microsoft is another interesting player. If you think about both the telecom market and the enterprise communications market, I would argue that Google has done a lot in the last six to 12 months to drive the telecom space, particularly around voicemail to text. Um, Microsoft, through its work in, on Exchange and mm -hmm. what they call voicemail preview for the enterprise messaging space. So any, any vendor who looks at Microsoft as a competitor needs to respond. And again, Microsoft has a very significant speech investment. Their competitors don't, and they need a source for that capability. And again, mm -hmm. they turn to Yap for that. So what has been the catalyst for customer adoption of this technology? Well, if you think about, you know, as consumers of, of, you know, these kinds of experiences, think about situations where perhaps you're in a meeting and um, you want to get a voicemail, you want to listen to your voicemail, it's really not appropriate to mm -hmm. pick up the phone and listen. It's a lot more uh, uh, appropriate to just quickly glance down and read your message. So there are just use cases out there. 
Another really important use case is around text messaging. We all have been hearing about regulations and legislation mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. passing about the use of, of text messaging in the car. What a lot of operators um, are looking at is how do I actually make this uh, legal? How can I, in other words, how can I use my voice in a hands-free situation to compose a text message rather than tap away on the keyboard? So um, there are use cases, there are safety issues, there are, there's regulation that's all converging to get the entire industry to look at voice as a real significant user interface beyond touch, beyond QWERTY keyboards. Mm -hmm. What's the ROI for the operator? The ROI is um, a lot of these operators today, a lot of the operators today are actually able to charge a premium for the service. So if you were to look at Cincinnati Bell and what they're charging today, they have a per monthly fee associated with it. Mm -hmm. And they're able to drive revenue and margin and actually stickiness around the service because it is a pretty compelling service. Um, over time, I think what you're going to see is that it becomes a standard feature. It's, only, it's just going to be expected. Um, that it's something that you get when you work with an operator. And that's where I think YAP plays a really significant role in that we have a very scalable, low-cost infrastructure that we can actually enable mass market implementations of these experiences, whereas in the past, uh, because um, some of the technology shortcomings historically around speech recognition, mm -hmm. uh, agents were used. But I think we reached a, a milestone where the technology that we're providing performs virtually on par with an agent-based solution. And again, what that means is that operators can roll out low-cost uh, mass market implementations. Mm -hmm. So what sort of third-party validations do you have to say that your technology is on par with agents? Well, the best validation is what our customers decide to do. Mm -hmm. um, here's a great case study. Cincinnati Bell was using a fully... Uh, agent-based solution, and um, they were experiencing some issues with it. Um, privacy concerns, the ability to scale, messages were getting dropped. Right. Um, Cincinnati Bell switched over to Yap, mm -hmm. and um, they've been extremely happy. And uh, you know, accuracy levels are virtually on par with what agents are able to provide. Um, turnaround times are very fast. When you get a message you see that the indicator is showing that you have a new voicemail, you want that message right away. Um, with agent-based solutions, the subscribers have to wait 10, 15, 20 minutes in some cases to get their message. What we do on our platform is we turn it around uh, very quickly, um, usually within what we call 1x time. And what that means is if a voicemail is 30 seconds long, you get that transcription back to you in less than 30 seconds. So it's almost real time, and that's really what subscribers want. So you're fully automated. Absolutely. What metrics does uh, YAP use to measure your success? Well, I think we just talked about them. One is accuracy, mm -hmm. right? How mm -hmm. close are we, or can we even exceed the performance of an agent? Um, two is turnaround time. Again, people want their information quickly, right away. Can we get that information back to you as quickly as possible? Mm -hmm. um, those are two of the key technology performance metrics that we track and that our, our partners want mm -hmm. to track as well. How about profitability? Company profitability. Sure. Yeah, um, so we don't disclose the details, but we're, we're tracking pretty well, and um, you know, there's a good shot that we're, we're fully profitable at the end of this year. Okay. What else uh, should we know about the uh, uh, voicemail to text industry, and also what else should we know about YAP? Um, voicemail to text, um, I, again, I think you know we hit a lot of that. I think what this is also showing is that there is a real place uh, in terms of voice transcription services. Voicemail to text is just the beginning. Uh -huh. We talked a little bit about text messaging. Right. Um, there are other applications that we didn't talk about around um, recording conference calls and being able to go back and get a transcript of what was covered in a conference call. These are all technologies and capabilities that are enabled by our platform, and I think voicemail to text is just the first proof point of the performance of the technology. Sure. Um, yeah, I think I think that's really you know what what you know some important things to know about what we can do as far as Yap. You can expect to hear and see a lot more activity from us around announcements and partnerships, um, and uh, these these will be pretty significant again mass market kind of rollouts that you can expect in the coming weeks. 
Uh, Marcelo, thanks for joining us today. My really pleasure. Appreciate your time. Thank you. Thank you.